this episode of Live WPTV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is James Galetti. I am Kurt Ang. This is the Boston WordPress Meetup. Uh, if you're new, we're here the last Monday of every month. It's a Wi-Fi code. If you haven't seen that, definitely check out our website. We have um, some forums. We have a job board. We have information about the monthly meetup. Follow us on Twitter and our Twitter hashtag is hash And all of our uh, monthly meetup videos are archived on our site. So this one, check it out. Shout out to Microsoft Nerd. Uh, thank you for the venue accommodations. Uh, AV, Wi Fi, heat, and drinks. Um, our other sponsor, HostGator. Um, if you guys are interested in hosting, 25% off your discount, Boston WP Meetup. Um, nice, easy one click install. And uh, something that we just started recently a theme repository. So if you check out Boston WP Demo, uh, we have a bunch of frameworks lined up for you, so if you want to give a, you know, one of these frameworks a try for a week or two, um, send us an email and we'll set you up with an account. We can't Boston. Do I actually have content on the slide? Or oh yeah, oh, sorry. Great. Sorry. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. There we go. Okay, how many of you are registered for WordCamp Boston? Woo. What's wrong with the rest of you? <laughs> Um, so please do check it out, 2011.boston.wordcamp.org slash schedule or slash speakers. We'll get you to the things that you might expect to see at speaker and schedules. Uh, it's a really great set of speakers. It's basically a full day on Saturday and noon to five on Sunday. We'll also be having a reception Saturday evening uh, upstairs here in the Nerd Center. Uh, but the main conference is at Boston University in the George Sherman Union. It's uh, $40. Uh, Lunch, a t shirt, and a day and a half of content in three tracks. What level user is it targeting, though? So it's uh, targeted across the board. So within, if you go to slash schedule, you'll see things keyed as beginner, intermediate, advanced. So there's certainly uh, some of our speakers, some of whom are in the room, are definitely hardcore advanced dev folks. But then we have a number of other speakers, including uh, some of the folks, say, in the strategy track on Saturday, who aren't even necessarily WordPress folks. They're just design or strategy or content folks. Uh, and so you know, I think there's really a pretty good track for everybody. And Kurt and James are running a little beginner's newbie camp on Friday, which I don't want to steal their thunder, but they're running a beginner's workshop from 1 to 5 on Friday, which is a separate registration. So WordCamp Boston is 40 bucks for Saturday and Sunday. If you choose to, you can register for this beginner's workshop on Friday that runs from one to five, also at VU uh, in the classroom, and uh, get fully up to speed so that you can enjoy Saturday and Sunday's content as an intermediate rather than as a beginner. So our, our idea was, you know, last year's WordCamp, we had one full track just for beginners, then you know, we, we felt like it, we kind of pigeonholed beginners into one track. So this year, you know, it's optional. All of proceeds from, um, you know, registration is being donated to WordCamp Boston. Aren't these um, guys good guys? And so hopefully, you know, I think with this class being separate, you can go and explore different topics in different areas and meet new people, you know, and not, not just your fellow beginners, so. Um, and we'll definitely, I mean, as I said, there, there's content that's, you know, very design and developer oriented for folks who are on uh, software download from wordpress.org and have installed it on their own server and are ready for that. But there will also be content for folks who are signed up at wordpress.com and just are blogger and users uh, who want to think about how to, you know, uh, get better at reliably posting to their blog or how they promote their blog or how they use social media or how they do video or uh, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, so definitely content for all levels. So just to let you know about this, there's only 15 seats left. For the beginner's for workshop. Beginner's for the regular WordCamp Boston itself, we haven't yet announced this, but we'll probably be closing regular registration on, say, July 8th, because we need to get our t-shirt order in and our catering order in and everything. We'll probably allow late registration after that, but you won't be guaranteed lunch or a shirt, so it'll be better if you register sooner. Than that. Great, thank you. Do you guys have any other questions? WordCamp or the workshop?
You, you can sign up anytime time. now oh. if you're on Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 2011.boston.wordcamp.org. That's Slash for tickets. We'll get you right to the registration page. Um, that's for WordCamp and for uh, I don't know why I gave myself like this. Um, uh, for the uh, uh, workshop, the link's right there. We also have a link on the WordCamp Boston site as well. Any other questions? Live WPTV is a side project of ours. Um, we, Kurt and I, we hang out and we we film a small show that we publish to the web about WordPress and all the cool things we find and just interesting tips and tricks. Uh, we live stream it so people can send us messages and questions and we'll answer them. Um, this past time was, it was a great time. Um, we did not see many of you. We wish we did. We had a bar tab that was over three hundred dollars and I don't see I don't remember seeing any of your faces. So. Definitely, definitely come out. Uh, to, you know, we have some extra sponsorship money, and we put that into this, and we get you know free appetizers, free food. We can't pick up the alcohol, but we get free food, and it's just great. So that's usually one, once a month. Um, check out the website. Follow us on Twitter. We'll announce it um, when it is, and it's just at a local bar, pub, restaurant. And we do have giveaways too. So you know, as part of the sponsors, we have um, you know theme theme subscriptions from from various companies, and so. Some of these are priced at like 150, 200 dollars. So we want to give them away at, at some of these live WP events. Um, so definitely check us out, and we might be making an appearance at WordCamp. Uh, next month, no meeting. Um, <laughs> so my name is John Bishop. I am a web developer in the Boston North Shore area. Um, I've been working with WordPress for about four years now. Moved my own website over to WordPress about three years ago. And one of the things I focused on is enabling my customers to take control of their content without having to come back to me. Ultimately, that's a win for me. Um, if they have to call me back to format a table or insert a button into their code, then I did something wrong. And usually what I do is I make use of widgets, page templates, and short codes to give them the most um, amount of control possible. So uh, I believe Jeremy Clark talked about widgets uh, a few months ago. Um, and I want to expand upon that and talk about short codes. So short codes aren't always the answer. Like you can use page templates and widgets for some of these things, but they're very powerful and you don't see them a lot. So I want to talk about them. Um, they were introduced to WordPress in 2.5 basically mimicking uh, DB code, which is uh, use the style, text, and forums and stuff. And the idea was to make it easier for people to do uh, formatting in HTML that didn't necessarily know HTML or CSS. And the short code would do all the formatting for them as long as they wrapped it, in the con or wrapped it around the content. So what was the problem? Uh, basically, uh, I'd make these websites for people and they'd still end up coming back to me because they wanted to create um, a pricing table or they couldn't format their images the properly. They wanted their images in a frame, they wanted contact boxes or calls to actions and all things that should be easy and you'd think with a powerful content management system you'd give them the tools to do it themselves, but it's not, you know, it's not in, by default in WordPress. So what I've been doing is whenever I come up with a uh, custom bit of code to uh, for any kind of display. So in this, in this example, we had a website that was using this button at the bottom. And to create that button, they had to paste in this bit of code right here and edit the bits that related to them. And uh, over time, it's kind of hard just to keep track of all these bits of code. Um, if they make one small error, it can break it. And it's just, it doesn't make much sense to them. So what I did, I went in and created the short code, which all they had to do was uh, do 
the blue short code and put in the link that they want to link to and then the content within right there and it automatically generates the same code on the front end. And they can use that anywhere in their theme, in widgets, uh, in the content itself, and uh, you can do more with it and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, just out of curiosity, like who in here has used short codes for anything before? That's awesome. Um, how many people have used the default short code that comes with WordPress.org? Does anyone know what it is? The one short code that comes with WordPress? Gallery. Gallery. Um, it's actually a very powerful short code that not a lot of people know about. And you see a lot of people doing crazy things with plugins trying to get this simple functionality when it actually exists already. So we'll get to that in a second too. I just kind of wanted to see uh, who knew about it already. So why are they useful? They're very easy to use. Um, there's a small bit of code that you paste into your, uh, into your content area and some themes take it a step further and make it even easier. Um, they're easy to create. If you have a bit of code like I had that was basically um, creating buttons, you can easily create a short code yourself to, for anyone else that's using your WordPress install to uh, easily create the same button. Um, you put it in the in the visual editor. That's the editor. yeah. The, the most common usage is in the visual editor. You can also use it in your theme and in widgets, but there's a little bit extra that goes along with that, and we'll talk about that a bit too. Okay. So if you use WordPress.com, you might have seen short codes before that comes with an, an array of them. Uh, the archives one, pretty self-explanatory. It displays. A list of archives and you can give it a set of attributes which we'll talk mm -hmm. about in a second to really uh, customize the display and all of these come with their own attributes that uh, ultimately give you more control over the display and make it easier to do things like inserting Google Maps um, believe it or not it's hard for some people to create the Google map they want and then have it work in WordPress because WordPress sometimes strips out certain JavaScript and stuff like that so having this uh, short code for them is a godsend and then um, things like source code. Uh, by default, short codes don't uh, run a few filters on uh, the content, specifically uh, things like W auto P and the auto texturize. And basically, what that does is that's what strips out the, the BR tag and the paragraph tags <laughs> from your visual editor. You probably run into that if you use WordPress. Um, so uh, you could use short codes to not run that bit of code. So basically, if you wanted to control the line breaks or you wanted to use JavaScript that you didn't want to get stripped out, you can find a short code that will basically saying, don't touch everything within the short code. Um, and we'll talk more about specific uh, actual uses of short codes in a bit too. And uh, another popular usage of short codes is to format images, display videos, and audio. So if you use uh, um, iTunes, you can easily embed a specific file from iTunes using one of the iTunes short codes that WordPress.com provides. Yeah, isn't that the plugin? Which which plugin? Well, there's a plugin I use for, for um, gallery. Yep. And I know there's a plugin for um, oh, poll. poll yep. Poll, poll Daddy. Yeah, Poll Daddy. I think yep. it is, and I can have any kind of poll. You just use a yep. Poll so, poll, those are all plugins you that you can get. Yeah, you can use those with WordPress.org using the plugins, but they come default in WordPress.com. You can use Poll Daddy, uh, the archives plugin, um, or archives shortcode, gallery shortcode, and all of those. Um, yeah, all of the, you can get all this functionality in WordPress.com on, work, on your self-hosted sites. Um, basically, all we get is the gallery shortcode by default. But with the new Jetpack plugin, I don't know if you guys have used that or experimented with it, it adds a lot of the short codes that WordPress.com uses. So if you wanted to get uh, access to a lot of those short codes, they're really handy for sharing. Uh, Pull Daddy's in there. Um, Share Daddy's also in there. Uh, you can install the Jetpack plugin, and that automatically gives you access to all of the short codes. All right. So if you haven't seen short codes before, these, this is the basic format. Um, there are two kinds. Closed and self-enclosed. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory. This is uh, enclosed. You can put some content in the middle, and basically you're saying this is where the content starts. This is where short code starts. This is where it ends. 
and we're going to do something around that uh, content. And then this short code can be used just for a simple uh, replace. So you can create an AdSense short code. And wherever you use that AdSense, AdSense short code, it would automatically display your AdSense. Um, and then the second part, short codes, are the attributes. So you can have in a uh, enclosed short code, you can add the attributes right here. It's, if you know anything about HTML, the attributes are very similar to how HTML works. Um, but ultimately, between these two methods, you have, gives you a lot of control. You can create all kinds of short codes, and we'll talk about some of those. You, you don't necessarily close that first one. You, you do have to close the first one. No, I mean, no. Under, yeah. under this one right here? Yeah, because this, this will just display as is. There's, not, there's no content in between. Um, so you don't have to close it with? No, we'll talk about the difference between the two in a second. I didn't want to go too much into how the code works, but I wanted to show it to you guys just so you had an idea of what was happening behind the scenes. And then if you wanted to, you can come back and look at this and create your own short codes. Is the function already in the WordPress software? Is that why you get to use the code, the tags? Th these are, or this is something specifically you created? This is something I've created. Just oh, okay. These could be any short codes. It could say AdSense in it. Oh, okay. As long as it's in the brackets, that's what the short, that's what the short code is. So this is a simple short code. Um, if you used this bit of code right here, uh, the WPV inside your visual editor, it would automatically, when you on the front end, be replaced with the high WordPress boss media. That's it at its most simplest uh, version. And so I guess a practical application for this would be if you were displaying AdSense, like I said before, you can just put your AdSense code right in here and then anywhere you use this code, it will display the AdSense for you, rather than pasting it every time and having to find the code. All right, so any questions about the simple? Can you put the function in functions.php? Is that where the function goes? Yep, you can put that in functions.php. Uh, if you're gonna do one on the theme, we'll talk about that in a little bit too, as far as where exactly to put this. There's some debate about that. Um, ultimately, this can go in your functions.php or in a plugin. <coughs> So this is a more advanced short code. Like I said, I won't go too into it, but basically what's happening is these are the attributes that you've set, and we're pulling those attributes out to be displayed down here inside of what's what's being output. So um, in this example, if I used the where do I, if I used the link short code and put it in the brackets, then I add two attributes, class equals blue, like the example I used in the beginning. And then href was wherever I was linking to, johnbishop.com. Um, it would output the, the link with my johnbishop.com in there with my custom class blue. And then the content that's between the, the two, the opening and closing short codes, is what's displayed in here. Yep. So just, just to check, I understood what you just said. So you, you're extracting the attributes that are passed by, by the, someone using the short code, but you're adding Yourself. These, these are these are the default attributes. So if you Got don't it. give it any attributes, it gives it link and a pound sign, Got which is it. basically not going to send it anywhere and giving it the default link class. Oh, so um, so any questions about the advanced? So you created this. Yep. And you're making it available on a site somewhere um, that people can copy. You, you, this is a, this are, by function. Said we should be able to write these ourselves? Not necessarily. If you want, if you, you could actually use this bit of code and it would work on your site. You'd have to write the appropriate styles to match the classes to display the different types of links. Um, but for the most part, you could use this bit of code. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Are there any other questions about creating this? Yep. What file would you put this code into? Like I said, it could be in the functions.php or it could be in the plugin or an A plugin. And we'll talk about the pros and cons of that in a few minutes. Anyone else? No, uh, but just to make a comment, I heard somebody asking about what the short codes are. What I found is that there are a lot of themes and plugins and widgets that have short codes built into them. So maybe it's just something to ask as you get into uh, a new plugin, or especially themes, that they have a lot of uh, button styling and things that John was showing before. 
just by using some of the shortcodes that are already built in. So even if you're not going to design and write your own plugins, um, you still have access to using some of the built-in yep. ones. Not with the base WordPress, but with all the other tools that we're uh, yep. And I've got tons of examples of that coming up. Uh, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how they're put together. Um, you don't necessarily <coughs> have to know this stuff. It just gives you a better understanding of what the attributes are, what, what the content is, what the difference between enclosing and self-enclosing. And uh, now we get on to some actual examples. So this is using the striking theme. It's a premium theme on, on uh, Theme Forest. And uh, what you'll notice about most of the premium themes on Theme Forest is they all provide, or most of them provide shortcodes. And the reason that's good is it helps uh, the person that's using that theme stylize their content to match the rest of the theme. So a lot of times what people will do without any knowledge of short codes is they get their free theme and then they want to go in and add uh, an accordion box or uh, any type of functionality they can find, copy and paste off the web. It's not necessarily going to match the look and feel of the rest of your site because uh, you're not using the same styles, you're using whatever styles were in the, the piece that you copied. And, uh, so most of these themes provide a whole array of short codes and some are more advanced than others and we'll talk about all the different kinds of content you can output. But basically what I did here is this is the same page before and after short codes. Uh, I just took the same string and repeated it over and over again at the top. But then in the bottom one, I wrapped them in a few different short codes, uh, drop case, a, uh, an alert box to make some content stick out. I broke my content, content up into columns, but if you have no knowledge of uh, separating your content with divs and using classes and styles to, uh, to just organize it and separate it all. You can easily wrap them in little short codes to, to style them, and we'll show more examples of that in a bit. And the short code even goes as far as adding icons, and there's all kinds of cool short codes out there. And that was the main thing I wanted to get across to you guys, is there's tons of cool stuff out there already. And I wanted to just basically bring it to the forefront and make sure you guys knew it existed. So we'll go into a couple of examples right now. Anyone have any questions about this? We'll talk about how I generated this in a minute too. So, all right. So now I just want to go into some specific short codes that I found useful uh, browsing through the premium themes and plugins out there. So these are the two most popular. Uh, basically, easily creating buttons and uh, content boxes. So the first example I used was for a button, and this is uh, the elegant themes. Elegant themes was one of the first themes that I really uh, became attached to because of their usage of short codes and page templates. And it goes as far as creating page templates or short codes for hiding content and displaying authors. A lot of the things you see, I, I tried to grab short codes from different themes and plugins so you can see different examples, but most of these things can be found in Elegant Themes. And I don't know if you guys follow the uh, WordPress Planet, the blog, uh, there's a blog in there called WordPress Planet. And they did a big tournament where they ranked all the themes, and Elegant Themes came out on top out of 50 plus uh, themes out there. So, <laughs> Elegant Themes is definitely worth looking into um, because of the usage of short codes. And can you get a plugin that does that in the Dream Team? The next example <laughs> is, <laughs> um, is J Short Codes. It, that, that's a plugin, it's not a theme. And it's one of the first plugins I found that basically provides a lot of the functionality that Elegant Themes has. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And the problem I have with doing a lot of this stylization outside of the theme is it's hard to match the rest of the theme. And you don't know, the, the, the plugin has no way of knowing the colors and the styles it's using, where everything's laid out, and all of that. So you can do it, but it's not gonna look as nice. All right, but JShortCodes is a great plugin. It provides a lot of, uh, th there's so much functionality. You display these content, these content buttons with uh, icons, headers, insert buttons into them. Um, so ultimately, if you were using a premium theme or something that had short codes built into it and you wanted to make a switch, make the switch, uh, J short codes could help with that. Um, so do some more examples. Do you think it's really worth purchasing a premium theme rather than using a free theme? I really do. Um, just because of the support they put into it, uh, the you don't for a lot of the free themes you don't see them really use page templates and widgets and no. all this content just like a premium theme will they dedicate a lot more time to it 
the support is usually a lot better. And uh, specifically when it comes to short codes, I, it, they do a much better job because like I said, it'll match the rest of the site. You're basically creating professional themes without needing the experience. You know? So that's what I like about it. Uh, I definitely recommend checking out Theme Forest and uh, basic, any, of the, any of the business themes most likely have short codes. If you look at the demos, uh, there's usually um, in the navigation a short codes button where you can see a sample of all the short codes that theme has. That's what I did for this. I went through, I opened 10 premium themes and looked for that short code button, and it gave me just a list of all the different possible up, up, or outputs. So here are a couple more examples. Uh, this one is it's a basic checklist, um, but using icons instead, instead of the default bullet points and numbers. And most themes, when they give you this, they'll have a bunch of different icons for you to choose from, not just a check, uh, a check mark, but this is from the Showtime theme. And then one of my favorite is uses of uh, short codes, and you see a lot of themes do this, is they allow people to easily create columns. And it's something that, it, it, it's, it's hard for some people. If you don't know how to uh, manipulate your styles or do inline styles or manipulate your style sheet or anything like that, it's hard. So this makes it really easy, and it, and it also adds some additional formatting to it. Uh, to make it look nice. So this one I liked from the Awake theme. It automatically did drop case for you and came with a header. So uh, when you're looking into these premium themes, check all these things. Because ultimately when you're creating your home page or you're creating your services page, you're gonna want to know if these are available so you can create that professional looking uh, you know, website. So. Are these from different vendors? Oh. Yeah, they're different vendors, but they're all, these, most of these are on theme force. I think there's one theme that I, that I go through, it's not on theme force. But if you typed in, in the name of any one of these, you can find the slides afterwards probably. Uh, you'll find it first result on Google. So a couple more, I already talked about drop, drop caps. I actually just found that, I had never used the drop cap one before, I just found that one the other day. I thought that was kind of cool, used it in one of my themes. It's just one of, the, one of the small things you can do to your site to really Raise the bar a little bit, make your site better. And then uh, quotes. And the way this is different than using the built-in block quote functionality is the short codes give you more options. So when you do a block quote, a block quote, you can assign a class to it to make it look different, or you can just use the different short codes to make the different block quotes. So if you know HTML, you can do it without them. If you don't, it makes it easy for you. So I'm getting some more advanced examples. A lot of business themes will give you the pricing table. And this one's big for a lot of people. You, when you see a services page, usually what you'll do is you do what you do in Microsoft Word. You'll create the paragraphs with headers and you try to make it look nice, but you do the best you can without the design experience. And most of the themes on ThemeForest will provide a pricing table like this where all you do is wrap it in the short codes and uh, give it the appropriate data and automatically displays it in a nice way. So that's from Elegant Themes. There are other examples besides Elegant Themes, but I come back to Elegant Themes a lot, I love them. And then uh, this short code, it, also in Elegant Themes, also in J short codes, I think, but uh, basically displays any author in your uh, WordPress site. So this is handy for creating like a team page on your website. You can have everybody sign up as uh, contributors to your website. That way they're all, you're forcing them to kind of come, become familiar with WordPress. And then maybe force them to all get Gravatars, because that's what you should be doing, because Gravatars are easy to use, they're off your email, they're great when you're commenting, and it kind of it helps you establish your personal brand across all the different places that you're putting yourself out there. Yep. Off the top of your head, do you know what a single site like? Elegant Themes is good because it's, it's 40. 40? 40. Okay. And they're, Elegant Themes is great because with that $40, you have access to any one of their themes, but you can only use one of them at a time. So if, if a cooler theme comes out, you can upgrade without paying, but um, ultimately there's a developer license too, and you can use as many as you want with that license. Um, but I like it just because paying once, I, every time I saw something cooler, I could just upgrade and all the same short codes. And, <laughs> Uh, 
Um, but the author info, that's from the uh, HubSpot for WordPress plugin. That's my plugin. Uh, one of the ones I'm working on with HubSpot. And the idea was just to make it easier for people to create their team pages and easier to pull author info and make it easier for people to associate their their bio and their image with their Twitter profile and their their whatever other social sites they're using. So once they install, install the plugin, people go in and create their new profiles in WordPress, and then you go into your visual editor and insert the short code and with the IDs of people you want to display, and it just displays them one after the other with all their social media icons, their gravatar icon on the left, and then their bio. All right? And this is the last two. Uh, elegant themes, a lot of the ones will have a contact form, easy to use contact form. This is it's always pretty basic. It's going to be name, email, uh, form. You usually can't edit it too much. Some might allow you to edit it. But as far as throwing a quick contact form into your website, it's just a little short code. It makes it easy. Why not? And then finally, kind of cool functionality uh, people do with short codes is they do a lot of things with jQuery. So if you're displaying things in an accordion, classical accordion, if you're displaying things in uh, tabs like this, it's as easy as wrapping them in short codes and it adds all the necessary JavaScript and uh, styles it nicely. And with the premium WordPress themes, like I said, it'll style it so it matches the rest of the theme. Once again, you're creating a professional looking website on your own. So any questions about any of these examples so far? So some other cool uses, uh, I talked about using AdSense um, and short codes. I talked about displaying social media buttons. Um, one of the things we do in the HubSpot for WordPress plugin is we allow people to create calls to action in a custom post type. And then they can selectively display the calls to action when they're, ro they're rotated automatically uh, in a short code or in a widget. Um, and then it keeps track of the number of clicks and all that stuff. And all you have to do is remember the ID. Actually, you don't have to do that. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but uh, it also, you can display uh, posts from our and RSS feed. There's a bit of code out there. I'm going to actually uh, hopefully get a, some resources for you guys on the blog post that goes up after this so you guys can check out um, where I got a lot of these pieces of code if you wanted to recreate them on your own site. And then um, uh, hiding private content is cool. So rather than creating a page template to make an entire page private, you can wrap a specific or a small piece of content with a private short code. And then only that piece, or that piece of content only displays if the person's logged in. Just another cool way to display private content. And there's tons, there's so many cool things you can do uh, with short codes. Just, they're great for integrating with third party services if you have no knowledge of it. So for example, people use it to display tweets easily rather than know the PHP and insert it into your theme. You create the short code function insert it into your functions.php, and then wherever you do latest tweet short code, it displays your latest tweet automatically. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool too. Yep. Uh, I'm just trying to put pieces together. Um, so you have like instruction set is in the folder you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, the the functions.php. Yep. And, and you call on that by putting the short code in the the, uh, the code I showed before, like the advanced and simple right. code, you, you can put those in your functions.php or in a plugin file. Right. And then you display the short code itself, the thing in the brackets, in the visual editor. So the, then what it does is it pulls the... It refers to that instruction set. Yeah. Yeah. Instruction set. yeah. So yeah, and it just pulls from okay. the functions.php. And we'll, um, there's a, yeah. There is a function that's really easy to use, and uh, what I'll what I'll do after this is I'll, I'm going to create this resource, these resources, and one of the resources is that bit of code. That's so if you wanted idea. to grab it, yeah. you can. Uh, I don't know if you guys there's a website called Katsu Code, and uh, on that one they have a I think it's top ten uh, cool short codes, and you can basically just copy and paste those into your functions.php, and there's a whole bunch of cool things in there. Put it. Sometimes I 
get a downward plug in because I just put it in front of you and I'm thinking I've, I've, put it, I've put it in there before and then nothing happened. And, and it can get messy too. Where do you put it? It isn't showing up. What have I done wrong? I'm trying to oh, to well, it's in functions on PHP. It should work as yeah, long as it's that. Gallery Yes, that's if, it, that, that, that's if it's in a plugin. If you're adding, if you're creating your own short codes. The gallery. You, you want could, a certain, certain design. <coughs> yeah. So, I want to talk a little bit more about those things right now. <laughs> um, so, I know before. <laughs> <laughs> but I know before I said <laughs> short codes are easy. Like, yes, they're an easier version of HTML. Um, there are a few things you should know about short codes. Uh, Justin Tadlock spent uh, some time, wrote a few posts about this. Basically, the problem becomes if you buy a premium theme, you spend all this time wrapping all of your content uh, with the pro appropriate shortcodes, and then a year later you decide you're going to switch to a different premium theme that doesn't have the same shortcodes. You're pretty much locked in unless you go in and redo all the content and add new shortcodes and stuff. So it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're doing this. If you think you're going to stick with the premium theme for a while, then it potentially isn't a problem. But if you do want to have that kind of flexibility, then it's definitely something to consider. Some some themes, I can't name any off the top of my head. I thought the hybrid theme was one of them, but I tried to look into this beforehand. They will take their short codes and put them in a separate uh, plugin. That way, when you switch away from the theme, the plugin still sits there and it still can generate all the short codes. Uh, so that's why. Yeah. You know, with these themes, just be first when you have a bunch of different themes, are the short codes going to go out? Or is it just consistent? It's all up to the author, the developer, as far as how, how he wants to, what the syntax, what syntax he uses for the short code. So what one person uses as buttons, someone else might call link. And then you have to go through and change all the buttons to so link if you're going to use that new theme. his theme seems to be more consistent across different Across all of their themes, yes. Yeah. So if you're using elegant themes, you could use any of the elegant themes, and you'll be fine because it's using all the same short codes. So, once again, how yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, kind of an obvious question. So on, on a premium theme, do they make the content uh, of the functions.php document accessible to the owner of the theme? Yeah, anybody can go in and edit it. The problem is not copy and paste the content of, of that into your theme. You could, you could do that. You would also have to grab the appropriate styles from the style sheet right. to make sure that it all looks the same. You could adapt from an old You theme. totally could. You can create essentially what's called a functionality plugin. Uh, right. all, the, all the functionality you normally put in your functions.php, you can create a basic plugin that calls all those same functions that will always exist uh, no matter what theme you use. Um, the problem still, uh, if the short codes are going to match the look and feel of the theme still. So that's kind of where the give and take is. Personally, I like that there are sh short codes in premium WordPress themes because they do a great job of, the, the, ultimately the end result looks very professional. But then you, know, you have a problem, you're locked into that theme potentially. But what I have noticed, most of the themes I'm looking at, they all use similar syntaxes. So if you were, I, don't know, I guess if you spent enough time looking into it, you can possibly you know, find one that has the same short code syntax, and then there won't be a problem. So it's definitely something you'd have to go through and make sure that there, was no, there were no you know, discrepancies. Any questions about the themes versus plugins problem? So another problem. That's just my personal opinion. And you can go in and you can do that yourself if you have the knowledge, but if you're using the short codes, you probably don't have that knowledge. So, so is it not possible? I mean, when you're using CSS, lots of times, if you plan ahead uh, well enough, you say, okay, so now I can use this universally across the site, mm -hmm. and then if I change the CSS, it'll, it'll you know, it's yeah. got to be done nicely. So you're saying that that really isn't the case when you're using short codes, that you can't say, okay, I'm going to use the short code in the same instances, but then if I want to change the shortcut if I do change something that it will disseminate nicely. So if the theme if the theme's the one providing the shortcodes. So if you're using the HubSpot for WordPress plugin or J shortcodes, then you don't have to worry about this because they're in the plugins. Unless you deactivate those plugins, you're not going to have this problem. Um, but with the themes, 
ultimately, if you could go in and edit the CSS, like we were saying before, uh, grab all that and make sure that it all matched up nicely, you could do that too. Essentially create your own functionality plugin off of the old short code. Um, but if you're using a premium theme, then you have to kind of figure out their thought process. Um, ultimately, if, if there is, I, uh, I wish I, I don't know who wins in this situation. I think I know one one does overwrite the other. I'm pretty sure the plugins overwrite the theme. Uh, so if you have a plugin or a theme, if you have a theme that uses the button shortcode, and you have a plugin that uses the same shortcode, then the plugin's gonna take priority over the theme. I'm like 90 percent sure about that. So it would be one or, one or the other. Wouldn't render twice. No, it wouldn't render. Twice. It can only accept one handler. It'll find the most recent one from the plugin if it can't find one in the theme. Does any short code have a, col a column on yep. the upper page? Do you have to um, create a custom page template and can it refuse to delete short code? You would do you that or is that a different topic? Uh, it's something that could be done. Essentially, you wouldn't, you wouldn't need a page template. So one way you I could approach right, right. doing the columns is you could have a page template that uh, looked for some kind of delimitator, you know, to know to put the column next to each other or yeah. something else. You could do the page yeah, template. You create a page template, don't you? Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's a lot, the purpose. You come with your own stuff, like one or two, but to really create your own, it has to use code. Yeah, you wouldn't need to do a page template to do the columns. So uh, it would be a lot easier without it. Um, I, I have a whole other thing on page templates. Actually, our most recent blog post was about page templates. Check that out. It's like a bunch of page template examples that johnbishop.com, J O N. Uh, it's basically on the same lines of giving more control to my clients, giving them uh, control over every single page using every single page template I could think of. This is basically a list of all page templates I think a theme could have or you could find useful. So definitely something to check me out if you're interested in page templates. So another potential pitfall is uh, nesting with short code. Basically, an example could be using a content box, so you'd have, the, you're wrapping uh, something uh, around the content, and you want to do a short, a button in, inside of that using a short code. Uh, by default, WordPress doesn't handle nesting. Uh, but when you write your handler function, which is what, when you're adding the short code, we talked about earlier, uh, the function that ultimately cr create, displays the content, you can run a bit of co uh, code in there called do short code. It's basically <coughs> checking for short codes inside uh, the content box. So basically by default, nesting isn't possible. You can try it out. Most themes and plugins will have it uh, work. They'll, they'll, they'll do the coding so that it'll work. Um, but if it doesn't work, it's because it doesn't work natively. Uh, just something to watch out for. And finally, I guess my biggest problem with short code is usability. Yes, they're easy to use, they're smaller bits of code, but if you can memorize and learn a small bracket of code with attributes, you can probably learn HTML. <laughs> so what's the point? Um, and uh, that's my problem with J short codes, is they, they, they don't have a user interface for people that don't know how to uh, create these short codes. And you essentially have to go and look at their documentation and copy and paste and then replace and you can just do that with HTML. So one of the things I encourage others to do when they're developing these things, and theme developers should definitely do this to make it easier on their clients. Instead of having to remember all these short codes, create a user interface that automatically generates the short codes for them. And that way, in the end, they can, it's, they're easy, it's easier to remember. They know what short codes exist. They don't have to reference something. It streamlines the whole process. Um, so that's what we'll talk about right now. This is an example from Elegant Theme. Basically, what he's done in the visual editor is he's added a couple buttons right there that allow you to have a pop-up box similar to the help button if you were to press that in the WordPress visual editor. And you select exactly the settings that you want. It gives you all the settings so you don't, there's no guessing what attributes exist for that short code. And then the output is beautiful. So um, I'll show you two more, two more examples. Uh, the top one is from the striking theme. So the first example I showed you guys with short codes with the, sorry, 
before I formatted it and after I formatted it. That was with the striking team. And this is the, uh, basically how I generated those short codes. Rather than remember every short code offhand, I select the short code I want. And as I select it, it gives me more options below that where I can you know, generate it. And you click the insert into visual editor and done. So you don't remember anything, very easy to use. How did you say you can use nested short codes in WordPress? Uh, basically, the the outer, like the containing short code, has to be able to handle, has to know to run the content through its own do short code function, because it won't do that automatically. So if you if you it tried to display a nested short code and it wasn't built in to display it, it would actually just show the short code in between. So you have your cool content box and the button would display. You just you'd see the short code there. You have to physically run that content through do short code, and then it displays the button. But J short codes, elegant themes, a lot of the sites will handle that for you. When you're creating your own, or if someone creates short codes that doesn't actually know what they're doing, you might have a problem. So if you're seeing your short codes, that's why. If you're writing your own short code code, uh, is it a pain in the neck to do, do short code, or do you just run it on the content, just run that function on the content, and then display it? Well, the, the short code, the do short codes run automatically on the content. So okay. you, you don't have to do anything. Not run automatically on text widgets, or, or outside of that. But it's run automatically. And there have been situ I have read situations on WordPress.org where other plugins remove the do short code from the the content filter. Mm -hmm. um, in which case, you just have to go and put it in again. But uh, that's a separate problem. Mm -hmm. If you had that problem, you Google it and find it. So the, the bottom example is uh, the HubSpot for WordPress plugin again. We just wanted to make an easy way for people to create these short codes without having to remember them. And the thing with our plugin is it's, uh, it's pretty dynamic. So it's, it basically regenerates this form based on how many authors you have, how many calls to action you want to create. It pre-populates it with your contact info. Um, and then when you click the insert button, it automatically creates the short code for you. This is just a little button on your visual editor. And one of the resources uh, I'll share on the blog post result of this is how to create this window yourself. It's actually not too hard. You just basically manipulate uh, some existing PHP files and some functions and you can create your own little button with all the little short codes in it yourself. Do you think that you could run into a problem with the way you upgrade in WordPress if that might disappear? Um, I've, I've tested it and 3.2 still works. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a possibility. I did. I, I did notice a small issue with the style, the styling, because it's using the WordPress admin styles, and uh, the new, I don't know if you guys saw the new WordPress admin coming out looks a lot different than uh, what you guys are used to. So um, I did have to make some small changes for that, but it more or less it should it should work. And uh, the example I'll share, uh, it's, it's a lot easier to implement than what I did here. It's basically one page, and you all the short codes right there. Definitely worth something checking out, though, if you're looking into using short codes in your theme, if you're not already, and just making it easier for other people to use these short codes. Is this like a pop-up box? Yep. <coughs> HubSpot logo to the visual editor, click on that, it pops up, and then you select whatever the tab or whatever short code you're using, and you click the insert button, and it automatically inserts that short code for you. Any other questions about the UI stuff? So this is a big deal for, to me. I think that uh, basically short codes fall short up until this point. So uh, when you're looking at WordPress theme, premium themes, check to see if they have some kind of short code generator. It'll help you out a lot, it streamlines the whole process, and you're not copying and pasting all these old These code. options aren't available on the default, you know, the free themes, you don't have those kind of options. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of free themes won't put the extra effort into right, it. Right. So. Some have the paid template. Some of them. So you might think that, gee, I'll just put it on the next line, because uh, it's, it's, it's me 
somewhere that basically tells it to allow for that. Once I did that one line, it worked, <coughs> me, it worked perfectly every time. So again, you sometimes the trial and error or asking people. People are very helpful, isn't it? Yeah. Getting a lot of information from you, just Googling questions about WordPress. Right. Oh, yeah. Any, any problems you guys have with WordPress, if you Google it, I, one of the things we talked about in a previous meeting was uh, how awesome the community and support is. Mm -hmm. If one of the core developers doesn't get back to you, then a, a plugin enthusiast, a theme developer, or someone that's just had the problem before will find yeah. it. Uh, or tell you it's a bad problem. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. The theme. <laughs> but th that is a problem. You, you have to be careful of exactly uh, the spacing issues between short codes. I know sometimes if you do two short codes right next to each other, sometimes the, the second one doesn't get seen for some reason. It has to do with how WordPress actually renders the short codes on the back end. Uh, using regular expressions, and um, for the most part, it does a great job. But if it's not displaying correctly, don't abandon hope immediately. Add some spaces, add a carriage return, and it might work out. So these are some random tips and tricks. I just wanted to include this in here for you guys, uh, so you can go back afterwards and get a better idea of what's going on. Uh, basically, these two are essentially the same, but I just wanted to point across that when you run do short code, you're not necessarily running a specific short code. You're scanning the content for all the short codes inside of it and replacing them. So you can have five short codes in the string right here, and it'll replace every single, it'll, it'll run the do short code on each, of the, each individual one. Makes sense, right? And then uh, another thing that's popular is people like to display uh, short codes in widgets. But it's specifically in text widgets. You find a cool plugin that displays uh, like Poll Daddy, for example, and displays your polls, and you create this cool poll that you can only display in your content, but you want it in your sidebar. You can just add this bit of code to your functions.php, and awesome. it'll automatically, yeah. yeah. But it slows down the page. Um, yeah. Um, probably, I, I couldn't find too much on this. I tried to find a bit more on speed issues using short codes, because you are running regular expressions on your That's content every time the page stuff. loads. So it could potentially slow it down. I couldn't find anything on exactly how much <laughs> I tried really hard. Uh, but keep that in mind. It shouldn't be so, anything too noticeable. WordPress does do a great job of what it does. Especially in 3.2, you'll notice things a little bit faster. So. so this last piece is pretty much similar to the first. But the idea is you can use short codes anywhere in your template files. So you don't have to use it just in your content. If you want to, to display that same poll, uh, in your footer, but there was no footer widget for whatever reason. Rather than go in and try to widgetize your footer, you can just do, do short code, pull daddy, insert that right into your footer.php, and it'll run the short code for you. Right, so you can really run short codes anywhere in your theme. Uh, they're not necessarily always the answer. A lot of times you can use widgets where you think you should use short codes, uh, but it's awesome functionality to have. It's there for you guys. Any questions about any of these things? All right. Thank you. <laughs> any questions overall? Sure, yeah. Can I ask about a about gallery? Yep. Um, I've been looking for a gallery, slideshow gallery that will display um, not only images but video as well. Mm -hmm. Not off the top of my head. There's a few. One that I like a lot is B Slider. It's giving me the most uh, options as far as customizing, but I'm, I'm not sure if it does video. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it wasn't your main topic, but you made a good pitch for elegant themes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, <laughs> there's got to be something wrong with them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's wrong with it? Um, well, Sometimes, sometimes I've noticed they're so elegant, they may go over the top. Uh, with, if you look at the content, you'll see they add like text shadows to a lot of the, the main content in your theme, and uh, it looks great and it's pretty, but sometimes it's not very readable. So I know I've gone in there a lot of times and I've made the font darker, made it a bit bigger, added a little more line space. But I guess that, that's my main problem with them. 
but it's nothing <coughs> I haven't been able to go in and tweet to get to work. I'm sure if you said something in the support forums, someone would give you a bit of code uh, to fix that pretty easily. So. Are you using the free theme from use.org? Yeah, um, I actually use a free theme for my website. Uh, I use, I use the, tra the traction theme. What's it called? Traction. Traction, I think I've seen that Yeah, it was just a free theme that I saw and I liked. Uh, I use the elegant themes for my newsletter that I run on the side. Business.info, right there, um, and that's a nice looking theme. Uh, any other questions? I'm trying to set up a site that allows people that have businesses, small business owners, um, to come in and set up a little what is it, a picture blurb link, or some, some formatted or templated content. Mm -hmm. Can I use short codes for that? Or It sounds like something that you know custom host types would do well. It's something that you might want to talk to uh, a developer a bit more about specifically because if you're if you're trying to limit exactly what they can upload and what their uh, the type of content and how it's displayed, you also need to control how it's displaying. And uh, you could use short codes to actually display the data in the end, but a page template might be more appropriate. So it, this is, you could use short codes for pretty much anything. It's just it might not always be the answer. Um, well, that was on, on my website, johnbishop.com. Website, you if you go, basic, basic basically, I didn't put the code in there. I, it, it's, uh, I linked out to the code, though. So for every page template that I liked, I, I, linked, to I linked out to their code and out to a demo of it. Um, but as far as the columns goes, I'd still just use short codes for the best way to do it. And the J short codes have columns. J short codes have columns. The parent company is. Uh, they do uh, Control Canyon. What? Invado. Oh, yeah, you know that. <laughs> yeah. He's an Invado champion. No, there is. So I do want to mention one uh, short code plugin that I use, and it actually is from Code Canyon, which is the same thing as ThemeForce, but they do like but plugins and stuff. Um, and it's called Styles with Short Codes. And it does pretty much everything that you just said, and you can actually create the short codes directly in the WordPress interface without actually having to go into the functions PHP and what have you. So they, so. they give you a, a user interface? Yeah, and it's the same thing like with the button in the, in the editor where it's like, you can't really mess it up. And if you guys want to pay the money, it's usually like 20, oh, 30 dollars yeah, for a premium plugin. Styles with short, short codes. It's 25 bucks, but it's totally worth it. You can use it on unlimited sites, so. Even on a free, another theme? Yeah, it works really on any theme, yeah. So you don't, yeah. Yeah, because it's in a plugin, it's plugin. theme independent. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Started, Code started Canyon. Code Canyon. Yeah. Code yeah. Canyon. Code Canyon. It's on CodeCanyon.net, actually. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah, code, I, there, there are also yeah. some other short code plugins yeah. I found yeah. on Code Canyon yeah. that do, uh, yeah. like, the author functionality that we have in the HubSpot for WordPress plugin, and a lot of the other functionality we talked about with like J short codes, uh, you can find in plugins on uh, Code Canyon. Uh, <laughs> So if anything, if you take anything away from this uh, whole conversation, is check out ThemeForest, look at some of the premium themes, what they're doing, and how they're using the short codes in cool ways. Uh, I want to share some other resources, hopefully in the blog post that comes after this, that has links to code you guys can copy into your functions.php, give you an explanation or exactly how you can create your own uh, functionality plugins so that you guys can become the
some sites uh, to become more familiar with WordPress. I recommend checking out WordPress Planet. They do a good job basically aggregating a lot of the better WordPress blogs out there for you. So you subscribe to this one site and you automatically get access to all these different sites. And WordPress Candy is one of the ones that was added to it. That's the one that uh, did the, the theme madness, what they called it, where elegant themes came out on top. Oh. And then uh, I don't think Cats Who Code is in there. So I definitely think that's right. <laughs> Short codes, uh, the potential, or using them. Yeah, I have one more. I think it's page 18. Uh, you're talking about how you had uh, you could build these uh, sort of inter interfaces for clients, so then they could jump in. With yep. short codes. I didn't quite catch how uh, easy that is to do, uh, or yourself. Honestly, it's it's not. It, if you're, it's one of those things. If you're using short codes, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. But if you're, if you're having someone develop a custom theme for you, ultimately now you know what's possible. You can say, like, listen, I want, I want to be able to create these buttons and this, these calls to, calls to action contact boxes myself. Can you make it easy for me? And they can. So for them, it won't be that hard. For someone that doesn't have all the PHP, CSS, and knowledge, it, you could do it, but it might be a little harder. What's the terminology for that? What do you call that device that, that either is within the, uh, the interface or just below it or the pop up? If you do a search for like uh, tiny MC buttons in WordPress, mm -hmm. it'll give you more information about that. And there's a there are a bunch of different filters and stuff for to help with the adding the button, doing the JavaScript associated with the button, and the functions to run after that. So there's a, there's a bit involved with creating the UIs. Uh, so a developer might end up doing that for you. Ultimately, it's one of those things. You know it's possible. If you do have a developer, let them know because it's one of those things you won't have to go back to them in the long run. All set. Mm -hmm. Where can we see you talk about short codes later next month? Uh, Boston work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I do, I'm going to do a similar presentation with uh, just basically more examples. And so, an appearance at the expert bar? Expert an appearance at the expert bar. Uh, I, forget, I forget my exact time slot, but uh, I'm sure everyone there, they're all experts. They can all help you. But uh, specifically, just because you saw me talk tonight, you don't have to attend my thing yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll have some new stuff for you guys, definitely. Uh, so, so please check it out. Okay.